Hey everybody, welcome to the Purpose People podcast. I've got a great guest today. His name is Mike Broom and he's from Battery Technology. So welcome, Mike. Thank you, Daryl. Um, we've been trying to get you on the podcast for quite a while now. Yeah, probably a, a year or so. I think I had an email that said, would you like to come along? And I thought, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Me on a podcast? <laughs> but from our point of view, I wanted to get you on because you you've taken on essentially the family business yes. and but the family business has enabled you to do so many other things as a result of running it and that story is not a story that we've told so i thought yeah. well let's let's tell that story and see how um that can work in line with purpose because i think often when we talk about purpose we always talk about your purpose is to do your you know do the job yes. and the two things are the same but what we don't often address is that you can live out your purpose while doing a particular job, yes. which funds it so you can do what you really want to do, so to speak. Yeah. And you're involved in so many different things and your job affords you to do that. So first of all, tell us what Battery Technologies is first and then we'll get an idea okay. where we're going. Well, Battery Technologies is all about batteries, obviously, and related electronic equipment. Uh, we mainly serve forklift trucks companies and dealers and end users and we supply new batteries and we service batteries and we fix the electronics uh, we've got uh, I say we're a family business so there's my wife my co-director uh, my dad whose retirement age is part-time I've got my daughter in the business and my son so and we use various other people as well that work for us as contractors but that's mainly what we do it's all very simple and straightforward really but it really is a family business. Yeah, like, every year we're all in it together. Like, we, we live together. We got to work together. <laughs> share the same car together. Or whatever. Yeah, we're all in it together, and we're still talking. <laughs> yeah, you're still talking. You're still friends. So, you know, the business. How old is it? Just you know, not it's, just in its current guys, but generally, how old is the the business? Well, we've been in actually battery technologies ten years. Probably this month. Wow. It's probably ten years ago that I uh, resigned the job that I had. I had a nice job, a nice salary, a nice car. Uh, wore a suit every day, went and saw clients. and But yeah, it was 10 years ago that I just went and bought a van on eBay and put overalls on and went back to working manually again. Um, just as a, It was just a step of faith. Yeah. It was just a pure step of faith. So um, interestingly enough, I mean, I guess certainly 10 years ago, the battery space has changed massively, massively. now. Um, you know, for example, we probably wouldn't have considered or maybe we we're going that way of cars being electric mm -hmm. you know certainly showing my age now but the only thing that was a vehicle that was electric power was a milk float, milk float yeah and and, that, and maybe you might have known about forklift trucks but that yeah. would be about it right? that's right yeah yeah there's been a real explosion uh with regards to the technologies and the high-tech technologies that are required for evs and everything else uh, but you know it's a really challenging space to be in yeah because if if you're in the battery industry or you're watching the news or if you're in your automotive industry you'll know that the car manufacturers for instance now are backing away uh from electric i think it was mercedes announced this weekend that they i saw i read a news article that they're uh taking their focus off of producing e and developing ev because customers aren't buying it yeah. and so when you're in the business and you're thinking well where do i go yeah you know where is the trend uh, it's a challenge because then where do you put your money? Where's your investment? So I think we're in a quite a, a bumpy stage of life, really, knowing where is it going to go, not going to go. And of course, you then got a lot of kick coming into the market, certainly in the industrial market, uh, to work forklift trucks, where yeah. it's going more lithium, but it's high tech. Yeah, and there, yeah. are, there aren't the people trained and people don't understand. And so there's a, a whole new... Uh, is set of issues that are coming up, I think, I believe. The traditional battery companies that we've been, you know, my dad started in 1971. Wow. Working out of a lorry for a company called Oldham Batteries, you know, yeah. working in mines yeah. uh, and with locos and stuff like that. That's how my family started, my, my dad. Um, so, and that, that industry hasn't really changed. You mm. know, the batteries haven't changed much. Now they've changed massively, but the people haven't. Yeah, yeah. You know, the marketing and the sales, they're, they're pushing it and they're pushing it because of legislation and all the USPs and so on. But what people don't realize is that actually when it's out in the field, uh, what do you do with it when it stops? You know, the yeah. manual's in Chinese. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. There, there are enormous issues coming forward for the industry, really. Yeah, and, I, and I, I, would, I would concur with some of the thoughts. You know, I've been looking at BMW. BMW looks like they've said they perfected the hydrogen engine. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I spoke to someone 
quite a long while ago about another car manufacturer. I won't give them away, but they were saying they were going down the hydrogen route. So the electric is a window of time, yes. not necessarily the game plan right. fully. You know, and yet you've got the technologists like Elon out there that, yeah, you know, is yeah. developing trucks, for yeah. example, you know, how to do long haul driving yeah. and, and make it sustainable. Um, there is a whole industry being birthed with solar panels. Yeah. Um, not the most sunny of countries. No, I know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and yet there's this big thing, big push for solar yeah. everywhere, um, which is interesting. So, you know, battery, battery technology obviously is, is obviously powered the whole industrial thing with forklifts and things like this but yeah. obviously it's diversification it's like can we centralize our home around battery technology rather than have to pull on the grid can we generate our own electricity and then almost the house in itself being its own self-sustainable entity and then the extra battery life look to push back to the grid so that everything seems to be changing in this space and it, it, it is yeah. quite a volatile market i don't think it's settled yet well you go back to what you're saying about hydrogen i read uh, something yesterday or was it this morning that in america because of look the at way- us geeks <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. um <laughs> actually because because you're, you're just reading the news yeah, you know, you're yeah. picking these things up but in yeah. america they've got an issue now where um the f- there's a funding issue for hydrogen infrastructure right and so uh people aren't going to get all of their money uh when it comes to R&D, I guess, or putting these things in place. So straight away, the American market's huge yeah. for the automotive industry. So, okay, they're pulling back from EV a little bit. You know, um, GM aren't making a plant that they were gonna, you know, was going to be EV. They, they've, re- they've retracted. So then we're going to go hydrogen. Well, hang on a minute. The, the, the financials aren't there for the manufacturers to make this really work. And, and for all of these things, you, there's, there's always legislation, government legislation you know there's uh there's the tariffs there's the you know in the moment you can get vat free installation on your solar panels for instance so all these incentives help these things move forward yeah and i really believe that unless okay there's there's the there's there's those of us who might think okay it's a green option we want to look after our planet but most people in business really it's an it's about economics and if that doesn't work yeah then it's not going to go forward. You know, 100%. people aren't going to buy EVs if they can't afford them. You know, or if there's no there's no payback. So, you know, there are so many factors that are at odds in the industry, and the battery industry is is in immense pressure. I think to you know they're putting investment in, but will that will that give you a return? And I think there are big question marks over some of those things. I mean, there are other experts out there that will say different things, but when you're grassroots and you're talking yeah. to customers. And you, they ring you up and say, it doesn't work. Can you help? You know, because I can't get it fixed. Yeah. You know, or uh, we had a call the other week. Uh, they, someone wanted to transport a lithium-ion battery. And no one wanted to transport it because wow. it's dangerous. The local transport company says no. Yeah. You know, so there are all sorts of issues on the ground at grassroots level that I think haven't come into the aren't in the media. But they, they play out. And, you know, it, so, yeah, it's a bumpy ride. It is a bumpy ride. And I think, that, you know, looking at the... Look at the aspects of, you know, from business to consumer to business to business. Normally, you'll perfect it in, say, business to business and roll it out to business to consumer. That's right. You look, at, um, you look at Formula One, for example, you know, you would have thought they would have adopted that first. In fact, they just come up with a new championship instead because there were obviously some question marks of whether they would fully go boots and all in on it, you know. And it can be anything as simple as, well, it doesn't sound the same. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, you've absolutely that is very true. You know, so That's very true. With with like Harley Davidson, for example, they have Harley Davidson have their e bike. Yes, right. But the the audience don't want to buy it That's because right. it doesn't sound they like the Harley like Davidson. Davidson. <laughs> and now they said, well, we can put a speaker in and make it sound That's like. Right. Yeah. And it's like, wow, that you know, these are all the problems that were unforeseen when yeah. they were going. Let's save the world and go completely electric. Yeah. And then obviously there's a bigger problem, which is what do you do after five years? Yes, right. With the batteries, yeah. Um, which is where Tesla are now. Yeah. Uh, where their first cars are coming to the end of their life, and their price promise was that they would replace the battery. Yeah. That's going to get expensive very quickly. Well, I mean, if you do, you have to go onto YouTube and look at what the motoring journalists are saying about this, what they're reporting back, and it's very interesting. I think mm. the latest one I was listening to was uh, with uh, the well-known German sports car manufacturer who made these big electric cars that people have been able to write off their corporation tax bill by buying this certain car. Yeah. Uh, that's obviously very fashionable and excellent motor car. Uh, but, you know, now they've come off their lease. Nobody wants it. 
There and you go. you go on Auto Trader, and there's loads. I mean, I don't know. It could be 200 of these cars that, you know, they're all 50 grand a piece. Yeah. But you're yeah. buying a second hand electric car. Yeah, that's it. And you've got to go to the dealer network. You know, you can't go to the specialist. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to see the, the fallout, I think, of this going on. It, economically, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, petrol cars are going up through the roof. Of course they are. Um, the, the, the crazy thing I remember is that maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago, there was a massive push for diesel. That's so right. all the people that are coming to the end of their retirement and whatever, they're cashing in their pensions and stuff to buy a nice diesel car and now they're like no we're gonna punish you for driving for that driving it into into cities so you know again where's the accountability from that perspective are you yeah. gonna refund them so they can go electric well, is there a scheme for there that? you are and i think also amongst all of this you got people buy with their hearts yeah i mean some people would just i need a car so i'll just you know that ticks the box that, that'll yeah. be fine but yeah. you mentioned harry davidson yeah. you know people buy these things with emotion with, with yeah. their with their heart, you know, they're yeah. they're drawn into these things. So there's more going on than just what does it cost me to buy it, how much does it cost to run, what's it worth at the end of year five, how yeah. does it get serviced? They're not thinking about those things. No. They've just been dreaming of these things since they were a child, you know. <laughs> and you and you meet men in their seventies that are you know driving Harley Davidson because yeah, they've yeah. always had a Harley Davidson, and it's that's and it's got to make that noise. So yeah. I think it, you know to, to connect with the consumer and the enthusiast. And, and, and all of these other things, it's a major challenge. And it's not going to be straightforward. And it certainly isn't. So obviously the core of your business is, you know, facilitating business to business market and making yeah. sure that the, the, you know, the forklift trucks do what they're supposed to do and if they break down or whatever. But there's, so just explain to us the difference in terms of what shifted in that space between forklift trucks maybe of 10, 15 years ago and forklift trucks now. So just people get a bit of context for what actually you're managing. Okay, so most of what we do is still lead acid. It's still okay. the uh, traditional, what people call the old-fashioned <laughs> lead yep. acid stuff. Yep. Um, and But of course, now in the last couple of years, we've seen uh, it shift more to lithium ion. Right. So I think that the material handling, you know, the industry is going to probably go more in that direction. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Ford truck manufacturers actually manufacturing the batteries. So whereas you, the, the Ford truck manufacturers would go to a battery manufacturer and mm -hmm. have a contract, now they're getting rid of the battery manufacturer and they're becoming the manufacturer themselves. Yeah. So we're seeing uh, a complete change uh, in the way that things are made up and sold. And so it's now branded by the Ford Truck Company. And they're selling it as you know, we are the experts in this field. So that's, that's a major change. Um, and as I say, we're at, like the car phase. You know, we're in the phase now where everything's working okay. We've seen some errors and, and issues with things that don't. Uh, but I think that we're, we've got lithium-ion uh, probably in those high-tech uh, battery chemistries uh, more and more in, in, the, in the material handling market. And I yeah. think that what the traditional stuff that we're more involved with, that we understand, is probably diminished. Right. Okay. So trucks themselves haven't changed much, um, except they're making them cheaper. And, and, and I think the whole Ford truck industry is going to change, not just the battery industry, because mm. um, you would have a truck maybe have three lives. You know, I mean, you talk about the green issues. Okay? Yeah. This is one that I, this is really gets to me. I think, well, okay, so people are going to buy a truck yeah. They're going to run it with their lithium battery and then they're going to throw it away. That's it. That's the biggest challenge. But what happened in the past was people bought a truck. After five years, they bought another truck. The dealer bought that truck back and they refreshed it. They repainted it. They put a new battery in it. Yeah. A lead acid battery in it. It's 98% recyclable. Yeah. And then they ran it for another five years. And then at the end of that five years, they took the truck back again. So that yeah. truck might have had five, six, seven lives. You know, it, it mm. didn't get scrapped. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's longevity there. And we're not going to see that. You yeah. know, one of the other industries I, I looked at years ago with batteries was the rail industry. Rail carriages, they get rebuilt. They fit, they're 100 years old, those things. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. trains are hundreds of years old. Yeah. And they just keep rebuilding the things and, and put new technology into it. Um, yeah. But, I, I, you know, in the fork truck industry, that, that it's something similar has gone along where people have, yeah, they've made money out of that truck again and again. So it's brought income. But also, they, they're not sticking it in the ground. You know, and yeah. so I think we're going to see as trucks evolve with technology yeah. and become cheaper, I think we're going to see them just being thrown away. We're going to see a throwaway uh, uh, fork truck society. I can't, and that's me on the outside, by the way. I'm not yeah, fork truck and guy. I mean, and, and what's interesting about that is the aspect of robots. 
you know yeah. robots get more and more intelligent yeah. as well you that's know right. you look at you look at the infrastructure for, for amazon they're doing everything they can oh, yeah, not to employ right. people yeah, so how right. do we get rid of forklift trucks and just have robots doing the and same get rid job of people of course yeah yeah ultimately because that's going to make them more money that's yeah. how they see it you yeah. know so it's a it, it is a interesting industry that you're in and i'm sure when you first started you didn't think it was going to get this interesting i this had quickly. no idea to be honest because uh, i just i guess followed something that my dad had started yeah you know i was in aerospace when i left school um, and through a, a long story cut short, I ended up working with my dad, or helping him out to start with, actually. Mm. And he trained me uh, in this old stuff, this of working with lead, you know, and, and burning lead and putting batches out. Quite a dirty, horrible job, really. Yeah. And then I ended up working with him. And so, you know, this industry that had never changed for years <laughs> and years and years and years would never seem to change. Yeah. Uh, you said with milk floats, you know, um, things like that. So... I didn't really foresee anything of the future. Um, and what's so interesting? It's, an, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah, but what I find interesting, that's probably how, you know, we, we know each other obviously outside of business or whatever, but the us engaging with you was that you were known as battery technologies. Yeah. And the shift was major in technology rather than just battery because things had changed yeah. so quickly. And do you want, when we began to think about starting the business, and I began praying about what should this business be called. I yeah. don't know. This just came to mind. Yeah. And it seemed really odd to me. Why would I call it battery technologies? Well, yeah, it sounds good. But why would I call it that when all we do is lead batteries? Because you don't actually realize what you're involved with. You yeah. know, someone comes like you did and come and shine a light. But do you realize what you're doing? Do you realize yeah. that this is the industry you're in and so on? And you go, mm, well, I just got to work. Yeah. Um, so so I, ha I had this name. Uh, and we obviously incorporated the business and, and so on. And then over three, four, five years, we saw other companies come along with similar strap lines. You know, I remember getting upset one day because I saw that someone had started a company called Battery Technologies in South Wales. Well, they pinched my name. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so I went on Google. I found out they're an Australian company. And actually, they make submarine batteries. And because wow. of a contract with the UK government, they set up a factory in South Wales. So part of their name was Battery Technologies. Yeah. And they, they, they got a lot of money. So I thought I probably won't bother taking them to court. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But lots of companies have had added battery technologies to their logo, to their strap line, to their company name, you know. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So we didn't realize we were a forerunner in these things. No, no, and, and, and I guess that, 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 that leads me very nicely onto, you've said a couple of things there in just, just the opening conversation is that you talked about you prayed about a name and you talked about your aspect of faith. Yes. And, and that's probably where we can touch on it because ultimately one of the things that you do is you have this as your business but you're also involved in business and faith at the same time that's right um and so just tell us a little bit about that and how that works well i guess it's it's very simple really i mean it, if i could just share how it began probably yeah uh, probably hmm, when i came to faith in my early 20s um i got invited i, mean, I thought you know i joined a church so i thought my whole life was going to be about church mm. and that business was kind of not God's plan. And then I got invited to hear this guy called Pat Kellard and he was running a business and they were turning over 33 million a year. Wow. And this guy was really serious about his faith. And he talked in terms of God owning his business. And I'd never heard that before. And he talked in terms of, you know, he would pray about making decisions mm. and his wife was uh, praying at home and, or, not just at home, but, you know, his prayer partner and would call him and say, you know, God said this and God said that. And uh, he would make decisions based on this interaction. Mm. And that really, really encouraged me and, and lit up something in me because, you know, we can talk to people of faith and they might sound a bit wacky. We might sound a bit wacky on the podcast, but <laughs> this guy's doing 33 million and he's just bought a factory in France. You know, to re and, and he's bought a broken business in France, actually. Yeah. Led by this this mechanism of prayer and hearing. Yeah. You know, and so this guy to me is successful in terms of his faith yeah. walk. Yeah. And that really inspired me, and straight away I just thought, I want some of this. I, I didn't I didn't understand the cost. Yeah. To be honest, this guy had, had, had there was a, a massive cost he'd paid for his walk and his direction, but there's a conviction, yeah. there's, there's a desire mm. to, to trust God in, in his business activities. Mm. 
And so I began a journey, really, of realizing, okay, so the, I'm an evangelist in the church, I'm preaching, I'm doing all this stuff, but actually God's got something for business yeah. and wants to do something there. And that, I think, has become the focus, really, over the years. And so we just then begin to see things happen. So um, following the model, if you like, of what I heard and, and my own journey with God, I began mm. to pray about and asking God uh, to do things in the business, you know, and, and I thought it was going to be from, for me, of course, for my benefit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you realize after a period of time, that actually it's not about you and your benefit. It's about him, God, and what he wants to do mm. in other people's lives. So you can touch other people's lives through your business. Um, so we had a family business um, and I learned a little prayer from Mr. Kellard really uh it was you know god i give you this business it was about ownership right you know this doesn't belong to me yeah which is difficult when you're, yeah, you're like stewarding it when stewarding you're, yeah, especially yeah. self-employed aren't we and we own it and yeah. we built it and we paid for it and all the rest of it yeah. but i was learning that it's about stewardship and learning that actually god had a plan and uh, not knowing what that might be so um i began praying this prayer that god i give you this business you know and uh do what you want with it thinking oh yeah you'll bless me and um so i i began praying that often but sometimes it was a, a real faith prayer you yeah. know like i was really believing that god would help me and we would you know see great things happen and then other times it would be a lucky charm prayer you know things yeah. were going wrong oh i didn't pray this week i better get back on my knees yeah. and pray that prayer you know right, okay because uh, that's my night that was my naivety yeah yeah and then 2008 came the recession yeah um very uncomfortable for us. The phone stopped ringing. We had employees. And long, long story short, the business was sold to a much, much bigger company. We were probably about half a million a year. We sold it to a company doing 48 million a year. And they wanted my expertise, actually, right, okay. really. And they wanted to put our expertise and the business we were doing into theirs, a bigger battery company. And then uh, I didn't realize they were selling out. Oh, and right. So they sold to a much bigger company in America, and they began. A, uh, they were now. Oh, we were a one and a half billion dollar turnover business in lead recycling. Uh, wow. So they're well known in the industry. So here I am, the traction battery expert, you know, in this big organization, and, and I hated it because I didn't want that. That wasn't my plan. I hated it, and I kicked and fussed. Uh, I was there for three years, but very soon after, we sold the business. And uh, everyone said, oh, it's really great, you know, that you've you know, you got your bills paid and you work for this big company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't very happy with the situation at all. Um, and I think it was in the October, just a couple of months after, uh, I actually began to say to God, I'm not happy. Yeah, okay. And um, we should never have sold this. And uh, so I usually get a bit emotional, sorry about this. You know, it's all right, I man. heard God speak to me very clearly. Yeah. And he said, but you told me it was mine. Wow. And you said I could do whatever I wanted with it. And I realized in an instant, with all my arrogance and you know, self-belief and all these things, that, some, that God took me seriously. He heard what I said. He heard my prayer. And he was deciding on the journey. And if he wanted to put that family business into a bigger organization, then that was up to him. Yeah. Okay. You know? And so um, I went through a stage of a, a few years of, of being really challenged. Mm -hmm. you know working for somebody yeah, you, know, yeah. you're, you're, you don't work for somebody but you, well you do but yeah, you work yeah. for your customers uh, and yeah, so on but yeah. you know you can get up in the morning and decide where you're going or whatever suddenly there's a pressure you know you've got somebody over you saying well where are you going what you're doing and yeah. and so that was a real challenge for me and so I went through a, a difficult few years but um and I, and I just realized you know it was just praying and hearing God speak encouraged me with scriptures and then a time came where long story short where I knew it was time to to enter in the business. I was scared, really scared, to be honest, you know, to let go of a salary and everything else. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and people said that I was maybe a bit mad. But know? it's an interesting one because you, you, you fight for, you fight for being comfortable in a sense. Yes. Yeah. And then you get the salary, you get the car and you get everything else. And then there's that gnawing inside going, I need to, not be in that place yes. because actually there's something else that I've got to do. Yes. And it's almost counterintuitive that, well, you've got everything you want. You've got the car, you've got yes. the house, you've got this, you've got that, yes. whatever. Why would you now 
press the reset I button know. again. And people, it seems a bit yeah. mad, doesn't it? Yeah, when people laugh about these things, don't they? Because they say, well, surely if you've got a good salary, you know. I met a guy, he was operations director once for Lufthansa. He was totally bored. He had three offices around the world and he just, he just wanted to, you know, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I thought, yeah, but you must have had a good salary and you've got good holidays and a nice company car. Um, yeah, I think there's something else that some of us say, well, actually, I want to do something else and I, and I want that freedom. And, and one of the great things with being in a business as we are doing what we do is that we can inspire other people with our stories and yeah. with our testimonies. You know, uh, you come alongside people that are struggling at all, at all stages of their business, you know, and you can actually come alongside somebody and encourage them and help them and build them, mm. you know, and just some of the stories that have come uh, on our journey, you know, yeah. of, uh, of God's provision, you know, things slotting into place, you know, it's just been, and, and when, you, when you share those stories, um, they just really impact people. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. think that's really what the mission is. It, it's, it's about people. Yeah. Because ultimately that's God's heart for people. Yeah. Uh, to see people uh, prosper in all ways, you know, and, and to let them know that they can do something and that there's somebody else on their side that will mm. help them, you know. I um, and, and some of these things are just miraculous. They're not just normal day-to-day stuff. Yeah. You know, I was praying for an order, so the phone rang and there was an order. No, it's, it's something more than that. It's, yeah. it's not like the, mag- the magic button. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah. you generating wealth and finances enables you to invest in projects that may have been asking for money and not knowing where it was going to well, come exactly. from and you're prompted to move on yeah. their behalf and they go yeah. oh that was an that's, answer to prayer that was and sometimes they're yeah. not even praying it's just right. they, they're just that's right casually throwing it out there to the world or and, they're not even believers yeah exactly so and you yeah. come along and you just give them some wisdom or something i yeah. think actually we we put a lot into money and money's important mm. but a lot of these things that are really important are what we speak and what we impart into somebody else's life because the because the business life is hard yeah it is and i I think the the thing that the thing i find interesting is when people talk about impacting the world and you know and and showing essentially god's love to people is often i'll go out on a saturday and shout at everybody that's shopping (laughs) and then give them a flyer and it's like no that's 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 just not that's just going to do anything but interest anyone yeah but if you if you know that someone's going through a tough time or you've got a product or a service and you deliver it excellently and and you've got wisdom and you've yeah. got insights and you and you care that their business succeeds just as much as yours yeah that's going to speak to that individual a lot louder than yeah. you know here's a flyer and thanks very much i've yeah. done my thing for the day and I, yeah. I i think some of the some of the things in terms of business it gives you a vehicle yeah. to be able to impact and influence on a positive note yeah and on a personal level and basic Very things personal. you know basic things like delivering on time yeah. uh, doing a project with excellence speak more than you know because not everyone's going to get a great service out there that's the that's reality right. of business you know right. tv shows exist because people's morals and ethics are certainly questionable and you know like cowboy builders for example or kitchen nightmares mm-hmm. you know they don't have that same level of detail but someone that wants to do something excellently because they're motivated by love yeah. all of a sudden then they're getting a better service they're getting better interest and 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 and, and that goes oh so what, what makes you different from these people and yeah. that might be the conversation that you have and say well yeah i'm not just doing it for me i'm doing yeah. it because i've got a bigger vision or a bigger bigger purpose um but the thing is i i find in, in within church and within work is they seem to be mutually exclusive or and 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 there's almost like well that's church and that's work but you see a bit of a crossover between the two would you say yeah i probably yeah i don't i don't view you know god has redeemed everything so that's my belief yeah so we're not to put just everything in a box yeah. on a sunday morning you know because lives need to be touched outside of that building yeah you know and so um you talk about you know delivering on time and giving good service some mm. people just need to be listened to <laughs> yeah. yeah you know yeah. I, I there's a great guy on you on linkedin he gives these little videos and he said people pay a thousand dollars to see a shrink to be listened to you know and yeah. that's all they want they want you to listen to their needs and listen to what's hurting them and in their business you know mm. and so that then means that you're very personal with people yeah i take it very personally if if i say uh, if someone says they need a, a problem solved i take it on very personal that i want to solve their problem yeah and help them yeah and 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 hopefully the the invoice that goes in the end just is a bit of fruit at the end but that's not that's not the motivation yeah. actually it's okay i'm gonna do something about that and help you with your issue yeah you know and if you're happy with that the results then hopefully you'll come back and 
repeat the order. Um, it's an interesting one because one of the things we've done as a company is we've implemented when we're doing a certainly when we're doing a longer project. In the past, we would have probably had maybe three or four meetings at certain gateposts of, of the project itself. But one of the things I've learned within tech, they have what they call stand-up meetings. Um, it's only a 15 minute meeting it might be all the stakeholders in that meeting but just that touch point once a week at the same time every week it doesn't you know sometimes it's a five minute thing as you got that da, 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 done that for me has been quite revolutionary in terms of the client services in terms of that they feel more careful because if they've got something they're not trying to phone or an email or a contact they know that there is this space that they can bring up a challenge or bring up something that they need help with at that point in time and i think a lot of a lot of businesses need communication as you yep. said it's like that they're being listened to and i think yep. creating those being listened to is not necessarily another two-hour conversation it could be five minutes yeah that might that, that might be all it takes yeah but sometimes we don't take the time to do it and you know i heard this statement many years ago the greatest marketing marketing strategy in the world is to care you're correct so if you care yeah. for the client the chances are they're going to tell someone else that these yeah. guys are great and so on and so forth so yeah. if you can demonstrate that you care about them then of course they feel cared for and they're going to tell someone yeah well, not, not everyone receives that care no not everyone's interested in that care yeah not every no one's going to know what's in your heart yeah yeah, yeah. because of what you want to provide or what you want to do for them but yeah. when that when there is that uh re receiving reception yeah. and there's that two-way uh, conversation going that's when things can really happen yeah you know like a guy rang me uh, one Saturday afternoon once and he was distraught I thought he was ringing me because he wanted me to go and do a job so I was <laughs> thinking I need to go and do a, an emergency job for this yeah, fella. Yeah. you know um, he was a, a technical director of this company and he rang me very distraught he said I, I need to talk to you I said okay he said um, I got a real problem my, my sister-in-law is hours to, or days to live wow and she's in hospital with cancer I think I think she was in Northumberland, somewhere like that, and we were, he was in Somerset. And he said, uh, I, I'm, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to say. And, and, and he said, will you pray for me? Wow. And I was quite challenged because, oh, my God, I've got to pray. For, this is a big situation. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's not a it's little much, one, is it? It's yeah. much easier to go and fix your battery. You know? yeah, You're yeah. asking me to come up with a prayer. And so I, I said, okay, I'll pray for you, and I'll, I'll do it now over the phone. And, and so I, I did. I, I just, I, you know, just sent in my heart. I felt for the guy. Mm. I uh, really did. And he, and obviously he's got a close family. So I did. I prayed for him over the phone. And uh, he, he, he went off to Northumberland, and he rang me on the Monday, and he said, you won't believe what happened. He said, um, after speaking to you and you praying for me, uh, and I didn't share anything like, oh, you got to be saved and all that stuff. Yeah. It's just love somebody, you know. Yeah. And and he went off and he said, I, when I got there, he said, they were so glad to see me. He said, I went into the ward. He said, I brought peace into the place. He said, I had my faculties, you know, I knew what I was going to do. And uh, I was a real blessing to them. And I and I was there for my family. And, and everyone came to me and I had a word for, you know, I was able to encourage them. Mm. And he said, I just want to thank you because your prayer made a difference. And I think that, you know, and, and then later on he had health issues and I went and seen him in, in the hospital and spent uh, some really quality time with the guy to encourage yeah. him. So, you know, that's just one example, you know, where people, we're all people, we all have stuff going on in our lives. Mm. And so when you're in business and you've shown or you've, people receive that, that care or know where you're coming from in your heart, you're able to touch their lives, you know, um, yeah. because we don't want to just have customers that we do work for and take their money. No, I mean, it's... It, it, there it, needs to be more to this than, than that. You it's know? About, it, for me, it's always about impact and influence, and you just don't know the level of impact and the level of influence you can have for good yeah. if, you, if, you're, if you're motivated by the right things. You know, and I, even now when we're engaging clients, if they if a client says to us, we want to make as much money as possible, we we automatically know that's fine if you want to do that, but we're not necessarily going to be the right fit for you. Yeah. Because we're just going, well, there might be a little bit of deep digging deep before you can go high first. Whereas someone who wants to earn as much money as possible, like, oh, just want to get that as quickly as possible and they don't care how. Um, and we're very much sustainable growth rather than, you know, peaks and troughs, you yeah. know, and that, and that's what we find when someone says, oh, I want to make as much money as possible. It's normally a peak. They're in a hole and they want you to solve their problem. And if they don't get it immediately, it's your fault. Yeah. 
and so we've learned but you know that takes time right but we work the people that we do our best work for is the relationship you know we've known them for years we've yeah. worked with them for years we've helped them we get to know their birthdays we get to know their situations we we have conversations on the phone it could be about their health or whatever and you know and we that's 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 the way it is now sometimes those business relationships end so for instance a company gets sold yeah. and you might not see them again but the reality is is that you always stay in contact because you don't know where that person's going to we've we've had people that have left one role gone to another role and the first phone call is hey i'm at a new place now do you want yeah. to work so we're still working with the old place but now we're working where this new person's gone or that the old person's gone to a new place and says i really enjoyed what you did there do it for me here so i think that for me it's a great there's a great thing in terms of when you care about people the the the, the journey that it can you know the journey or the parallel journey that you can have with someone but also it comes back to you it goes back to you know a biblical adage of the whole sowing and reaping yeah you know if you continually so good then the good will come back and as a result of that yeah someone leaving and having an amazing experience will remember it you That's know right. because it's not always common sadly yeah. it should be but it's not and there, there are initiatives out there that are trying to get businesses to up their game from b corp to the good business charter and things like that but ultimately it comes down to deep down do you care? Yeah. Do you actually care about how this business works and do yeah. you want them to succeed? Yeah. And I think that's, a, for me, when I work for a client, I see that I'm part of it. You know, that's how I, that, it's, it's weird, you know, like we're working for a company and I, I want them to succeed because I feel like, although I'm not a stakeholder, I am in a sense and that's how I've always seen it. Yeah. So if I get involved, it's like, you know, we're working with a company around AI and it's like, yeah, I know my brain is in that conversation, just watching Google and Musk and all that sort of stuff because I generally care and interested and yeah. I need to know this stuff. So that propels me to learn more and understand. So from your perspective, we just want to cover the last thing of, of what you're involved with. You're, in, you're involved with a, um, an organization called the ICCC. That's right. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, International Christian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Rolls off the tongue. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's when uh, they, they were the people that invited me to hear Mr. Kellogg all those years ago. Yeah, good. You know, and it's just a bunch of people, really, uh, different levels of business, different levels of faith. Yeah. Um, that want to encourage each other and equip each other to do this journey of life and faith. Yeah. You know, so there's conferences and there's breakfast meetings and there's one-on-ones and there's a teaching series. You know, there's uh, many years ago, God prompted a guy called Lawrence to develop You Can Start a Business video series that went out for China Education TV. Wow. So they could, uh, actually, they really took it on. The Chinese government welcomed it. Uh, so they weren't allowed to say uh, anything about the Bible, but they could say it is written. You know, <laughs> okay, yeah. Just put some proverbs in and just teach people how to start a business. And that led on to another series, which was uh, developing a leading business. Wow. Um, so, you know, and there's some great materials, you know. Yeah, but yeah. the inspiration, you know, people coming alongside people and uh, praying for you and encouraging you and lifting you up, you know, and because we're... We really are in a spiritual war. There's a yeah. spiritual aspect of things. So just having people that will help, encourage, inspire, you know, from around the world, it's just been amazing, really. It's not a networking organization. It's, it's about teaching, training, equipping, inspiring, mm. you know. And, you know, I've, yeah, I've been there, what now, nearly 30 years, I guess. Wow. Yeah, probably just involved in some way or another. And um, it's, a, it's, it's just great. Uh, yeah no I, I you know i had the honor to come and speak at a, a, one of the conferences it was wonderful too yeah and, and and what i liked about it was that you know often you'll find the entrepreneurs or the business owners at the back of the church hiding in the corners and the only time they get speaking to is if the they roof want to check what <laughs> when the roof needs fixing or there's a building project and and i and i feel that you know there's got to be more to life than just that and i think when when i spoke at the ICC they were generally kind-hearted motivated people that want to do more than just fix the roofs and, right. and this or whatever and they just want to help people out of poverty in a way you know and, yeah. and and employ their gift and and maximize their potential and stuff and it just it was good to be around just to see that sometimes we pigeonhole the businessman into this yeah well actually outside of church they're doing so many other things and in a sense they might have more contact with the outside world than the people that are doing the you know doing the church stuff and i think for me 
that was that was that was great just to see that there is a body of people that care i've got a couple of other friends like um a lady called camelita and and she's she was originally from trinidad tobago um i love to get her on the podcast you know we're, we're yeah so we'll, we'll get her soon but she her story is interesting because she she was like literally surviving off the rubbish di- rubbish dumps with her mother eating food when she first came and when she was a young girl eventually came to the uk um studied law got a a scholarship or something like that and then and basically now has built a property business of which now she gives to charity on a regular basis because she's been there by the way and you know doing well you know they they just had their um andrew her husband had their 60th birthday they went to the ritz and and you can tell at the same time she's at the Ritz, you've got this other crowd like going, what's she doing at the Ritz? You could save a load of people if you weren't yeah, spending yeah, that money. Yeah. And I'm going, but if you took time to know what she does, she's impacting and influence That's a whole load does. more people than you would realise. Yeah. She doesn't shout about it. No. She's not taking pictures and selfies of whatever else. But that's what I was, That's the ICC was full of people. Yeah. ICCC. Yeah. They dropped the one off. Um, was full of people like that, yeah. and I think for me that that was that was that was really good to yeah. actually encourage people to say, "Look, you are making an impact. Yeah. Keep going because it yeah. is absolutely yeah. needed." You know, I've run football teams in deprived areas or whatever else, and you just don't know what you have done to you know just see people's lives turn around it, where they would never be given an opportunity. And it brings before. a challenge to us at all levels because you know we're we're doing what we sense God is leading us to do. Uh, but there are other people like the lady you're talking about they're on a different plane um, yeah you know and yeah. and you think wow there's a guy not far from here actually he, he runs a coffee business yeah you know and he's importing coffee um from different parts of the world but then he's actually taking his profit yeah and he's going back to the the grower and he's saying well you could do with you know some extra greenhouses or a new tractor or whatever i'm going to actually sow some of this profit i've made out of importing your coffee into what you're doing yeah and when you hear of people doing that you think wow these are free people yeah they're they're free in their in their heart because obviously they're they're earning a living you know and they're experts in their field yeah. he's a coffee expert but this guy is going back to his supplier that's like me going back to my battery supplier and saying mm, i think you could do within some enhancements in your you know in your marketing i'm going to get Dow to come along and tweak your business and i'll pay the bill you know that's people don't do that no but that's because that's madness. But th- there are people like this guy who, who says, no, I've got a heart for these people. Mm-hmm. They're important to me. I want to love them. Without them, I don't have a business. And they need some intervention. And the government around them, the people around them, they're not helping them. So I'm going to take responsibility. Yeah. And I'm going to sow what the money I've made into that business that isn't my own. That's... That's real giving. That's yeah. real faith. Yeah, and, a, and, 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 and impact. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a, there's a couple of things. There's a company in Wales called Purple Shoots. Um, the founder, the founder's a Christian, and she came up with an idea of saying, "How do you help people with ideas out of poverty?" So she's got essentially micro loans. So not massive loans, but they will vet them on a relationship basis rather than a credit score. Right. to get them up and running yeah. so like for instance, someone wants to start a valeted business they would lend them enough to get all the kit and then work out a payment plan to get that money back but then also shadow them and work with them to succeed and that that business is growing and the need is growing so that and she is benefiting the community that way and then at the other end of the scale is a guy called um oh I just remember his name kevin Byrne, and um he is the founder of check checker trade and um, he exited Checker Trade uh, for 75 million. And he continually builds houses, hospitals, and that in Bangladesh. So I had the privilege to see him speak. And I, I said to him, I said, Look, what keeps your feet on the ground when you've got 75 million pounds in the bank? And he said, Well, quite simply, this. He said, When I know they're kids that will be sold by their parents for $25 and two bowls of rice, he says, That keeps me going because I want to stop that. And I thought, there you go. There's a guy with a vision bigger than just himself, vision bigger than just his business. He invests in a lot of stuff and a lot of um, projects. And, and, you know, at some point we'd love to get him on as well. But, you know, his life's not been perfect. And that was great about his story. He was telling where he's come from and where he's done. But again, that key component of influence and impact is driven by love, you know, and ultimately, you know, that 
he has made more of a difference in the lives of that those people that anyone anyone would have made for many 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 years because actually he can be trusted with those finances to be able to achieve it so i think we can do great things with businesses we yes. can you know it's not just prosperity is not for self it's about influence and impact and as long as we don't lose sight of that then you know that kind of money and that kind of finance is is in good hands That's so right. to speak so mike how would someone get in touch with you you know um maybe to reach out and find out how you do in your life or they might need their battery replacing <laughs> or they've got problems with their infrastructure. What, what, uh, how would they get hold of you? Well, I guess they'll find me on LinkedIn and yeah. social media of the company, Battery Technologies UK Limited, or, and we're on Instagram. Yeah. My daughter's done a wonderful job of our social media. Excellent. So uh, we've got, we're on Instagram and places like that. So yeah, they can find us quite easily. And yeah, if they want to talk about a faith journey or, uh, or batteries yeah i'm happy to talk get charged for living I'll speak to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well thanks mike it's been an absolute pleasure to have you thank on you and really appreciate your time i, I really, really enjoyed enjoy it. spending time with you Darryl. thank you cool hi everybody thank you so much for listening to the purpose people podcast how you can help us is to like and subscribe our youtube channel you can also subscribe to our podcasts on apple spotify Google and Amazon. That helps us get our message out there to help people go after their dreams, double down on it and be successful in life on their terms.